from the cross of Jesus came the word, uh, came the, a word was coined, it was called, the word is excruciating. It's our word now, excruciating. Death by crucifixion was a, was a common, common uh, way to deal with the Romans and they, for folks that crossed the line with them. But it's important, it's important today as we think about this is love to, to think about what the cross was. You know, the cross not only was excruciating pain, but it was death by asphyxiation. Pretty much everyone that died from the cross died from not being able to breathe. The amount of time on the cross ranged from three or four hours to sometimes as long as nine days. People that were crucified were always crucified in places of high visibility. Probably in today's time it would be like being placed at, at Rupp Arena or some really extremely public place. Men many times were crucified at eye level so that people in this public place could, could walk by and mock them. A lot of them spit in the faces of those being crucified and, and tr tried everything possible to humiliate them. Almost all persons that were crucified were crucified naked without, for, total, for total embarrassment. Certainly, as a person began to die on that cross, then they, become, they became incontinent. And so there at the foot of the cross was the fluids that had been, uh, been dispersed by the person. So you can, see, you can see part of the scene. Most of the people that were crucified and their families were so, so embarrassed by the situation that they never came for their bodies. And so what that meant, it was very common, it was very common during this time to see a body still on the, on the cross. And the vultures picking apart the body after, after, the, after the person had passed away because the family wouldn't come and get the body. And it's said about, if you, if you read the history of that time, what happened was that as the body stayed, stayed on those crosses, is that then feet and hands would eventually fall off of the bodies. And the dogs would then take those hands and feet and they, they would become, they would become uh, items that they would be carrying around all over the area. And so it was really common in the houses at that time to see hands and feet laying around that the dogs just uh, loved to chew on. Eventually, over time, for those whose would, families that wouldn't come and get the bodies, the, the bodies were put into some kind of a garbage bag and then just thrown into the dump. It's interesting to know that if we think back about, if we think about that time and the cross and the crucifixion, that what was, what was valued more than the bodies was the wood the crosses that they were crucified on and the nails because they were always saved. The crosses and the wood were always saved. So what that meant for, for Jesus when he was crucified is that there was, there was blood on his cross before his blood was on his cross. Those nails that were used to nail his feet and his hands uh, to the cross had been used to nail other people's hands and feet to the cross. So as we think about as we think about the cross as we move towards as we move towards the passion play, there's nothing that I could say that could could bring much any any more description. In our in our culture today we, we've tried to steer away from the brutality of the cross. Another interesting fact about the cross is mostly men were crucified but when a woman was crucified, she was always crucified facing the cross and never, never facing out. As we think about the cross and as we think about the love that was shed on the cross of Jesus and that this is love.
It's interesting to look at, at the disciples and how they responded to the cross of Christ. Many of them ran away during, during the particular time, fearful for their lives. Even Peter denied Jesus. But it's interesting that when they came back after the, after the death and the resurrection of Jesus, they came back stronger than ever. It's said about Peter that he was crucified, but he chose to be crucified upside down because he didn't want his crucifixion uh, to represent Jesus at all. Andrew also was crucified, as we think about the disciples. Most of those were crucified after the cross. I think only one disciple uh, lived to die a natural death, probably John, at Ephesus. But Andrew wasn't nailed to the cross. He was roped to the cross. He was crucified. He was crucified uh, uh, standing up, but they roped him so that he would suffer more. Not all the disciples were killed by crucifixion. Some were killed by the sword, and some were killed in other ways, but all died painful deaths for their commitment to the cross of Jesus. That's why Jesus would say, deny yourself and take up your cross and, and follow me, because the way of following Jesus is the, is the, way, is the way of suffering. Now, if we're, really, if we're really full of love at First Baptist Church of London, then it will reflect itself from the cross in several ways. It will reflect itself in our love for the Savior, that Jesus just won't be another name that we call out, but it's a name that we worship and have reverence about. Probably, there's nothing hurts me any more to, to hear college students or others when they use Jesus Christ as a curse word. Also to damn the name of God because I know those names, those names are to be revered and honored so much. But when we think about the cross, we think about the great sacrifice and the love of the cross. Also, as we think about, as we think about our falling in love with the Savior, and we think about what he gave on the cross, then also we fall in love with the scriptures, as it has been read so beautifully today by Susan, is we, we just want more Bible, not less Bible. I love the fact today that we stand and stood in reverence to the Word of God. Of course, we can be in reverence sitting down, but we can be in, in standing as well. And so when we, when we experience the love of Jesus, then we want, we want to experience the power of the Word of God. And so when, we, when we, we can look for things at church, our love for Jesus, our love for the Scriptures, and our love for the sanctuary, our, just, our just desire when we walk through those doors to want to be here, and as we prepare for the next senior pastor, I just think what we need to do at First Baptist Church of London is just raise the love up in the church that we have for Jesus. Amen? That we just raise the love up because he's the reason that we're here. Also, we have a love, we have a love for the saints of the church. We may not always agree with every believer. There's a, for ever how many people that are here today, there's that many of number of world views. Hopefully the one thing that we agree on is that we believe that Jesus is Lord in our lives. But we all look at things differently. But we gather unity, we gather unity in the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. And then we embrace the diversity in each other in other areas. And so as we focus on what's most important, then it gives us a love for the saints. I so appreciated the word today for about break time and, and that Beth shared. Because not only does it give, a, give us a love for each other, but it gives us a love for those who need Jesus. I value, I value a ministry that's interested in taking the gospel uh, to children during the day in schools. Don't you? Say amen. And so that's what the power of love does, isn't it? It causes us to love the Savior and 
and to love the scriptures and to love the sanctuary and to love the saints and to love the sinners. So the scripture that was read today reminds us that God's love is, is, is un- unending. It's everlasting. It, it has no, no boundaries. That it's unconditional. That Jesus gave his life on the cross because he loved us that much. That it's unwavering. The Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And so as we think about what has so beautifully been sung today by our choir, that the, what Jesus did for us on the cross, as we prepare our hearts for the passion play, as we prepare our hearts for the next senior pastor, then we realize this is love. This is what love is all about. And so let me close today as, as thinking, about, thinking about our topic of this is love in terms of what this love means. Isaiah 49, 16 says, God loves us so much that he engraved your name on the palm of his hand. His love is unique to each one of us. Matthew 10, 30 says, he loves us so much that he knows how many hairs are on our heads. Psalms 56, 8 says, he loves us so much that he saves your tears in a bottle. And Jeremiah 31, 3 says, he says he loves you with an everlasting love that has no end. And so just let me share some things that I researched in Scripture as we close about what God's love means to me. And maybe you can relate to it as well. Because of God's love on the cross, I know the one true God. Because of God's love on the cross, I've been saved by His grace. My salvation is complete. I have passed from death to life. I am fit for heaven. I have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I will walk with Christ in what? I have been healed by His stripes. I have been forgiven all trespasses. I am made right by the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed through His blood. I am bought with a price. I have been delivered from the power of darkness. I will not, because of His great love, come into judgment. I am a child of God. I belong to Jesus. I am a joint heir with Christ. I have been adopted into the family of God. I am rich because of this love. I am a new creature because of what he did for me on Calvary. I am renewed by the Holy Spirit. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ. I dwell in Christ. Christ is in me. The Spirit of God dwells in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I have an anointing on my life because of the cross. I have been called with a holy holy calling. I have been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. I am chosen in Christ. I am complete in Christ. I am a child of God. Amen? I am a child of promise. I am a branch to the vine. I am born again. Again, into his forever family, I have been crucified with Christ. Christ is my life. I'm being changed into Christ's glorious image. I am not of the world. I am clothed fully in his righteousness. I am a citizen of heaven. I am a pilgrim who is not at home in this world. Christ has made me free, and he has made me free indeed. Jesus is my deliverer. I am, I have the mind of Christ. I have all things that pertain to life. I have God's all-sufficient grace. I have rest for my soul. I am not in darkness. I am his workmanship. I am sealed by God. I am on the rock, and his name is Jesus. I am more than a conqueror because of what Christ did on the cross. I have a living hope. Satan cannot touch me. 
I am receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. I have a place reserved in heaven. I will sit with Christ at his throne. I will be with my God forever. And Satan, I am tired of you. You've messed with his church too long. You tried to ruin our lives and steal our song. But we serve notice on you. You don't have a chance because what Jesus has done on the cross. Amen. For I am covered by the precious blood of the Holy Lamb. I'm a blood-bought, bona fide child of the King. No matter what may come my way, you cannot hold us down, Satan, at First Baptist Church of London. Amen. We are taking back our joy. We're taking back our peace. We're taking back all the things that the devil stole from us. I am not ashamed of Jesus. I have made my decision. I am humbled by what Jesus did for me on the cross. I won't give up, back away, or slow down. My past is redeemed and my future is secure. I'm lifted by prayer and I labor by power. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My, pe my mission is clear. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I will press on till Jesus returns. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the power of the cross and this is love let's pray Father God as we as we close this time we think about the cross we think about the excruciating pain of the cross that he chose to die so that we can have life that he chose to suffer for our sin because we needed a substitute. We needed, we needed somebody to come and take our place because we had no way of dealing with the sin by ourselves. That it took a great exchange Father God, of your Son for us. But yet, yeah, Lord, I, I, I'm concerned that we sit in a worship service today and we just take a lot of that for granted. That we've forgotten what you have done for us. Our hearts have grown cold. Our focus has been more on the world than in you. Our passion has waned because we've forgotten about the love that you showed for us on the cross. I pray that in this room right now that we would be humbled afresh that we would move from pride and arrogance to becoming servant leaders, just thankful to be here and thankful to worship and thankful to call you as our Lord. Father, forgive us when all of this has become more about us and less about you. May our prayer today be that we might decrease so that he might increase. I pray today for one that's never followed you. I pray that they'd have the courage to ask for forgiveness and ask you into their life. I pray, Lord, for that person today that really, as we've been talking about preparing for this next senior pastor, has done absolutely nothing. For they see this next pastor to come along as 
something just from the business world that we, we hire a person and we pay a salary and we don't have to do anything. I pray for brokenness and humility instead of cockiness and arrogance and pride. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would fall in this place and to teach us 